Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar. Um, I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, my name is Siddharth, and I'm an IT security and compliance specialist uh, working at Manage Engine. And I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you here today uh, on behalf of everyone here at the Manage Engine AD Solutions team. Uh, but just before we get started with the presentation, um, I just want to take a, a moment to ensure that um, you have no difficulties uh, with viewing my presentation, and I hope you have no issues with uh, the audio as well. So in case you have any difficulties, um, just ping us on the live chat, and our tech support team will try um, and sort out um, any issues. So I hope there's, there's no issues with, um, with the audio as well as uh, the chat screen. So uh, I just want to get a couple of other um, housekeeping things out of the way. Uh, we will be sending you uh, the entire presentation along with the webinar recording. So you don't have to worry about um, being able to share this with a colleague. So we'll, we'll be sending this over in about a day or two. Um, and also, I just wanted to again remind you that you can ask any questions that you have um, over the course of the webinar on the live chat. Uh, we have our tech support team with us so we can um, answer any questions that you have uh, regarding the content of the webinar. Um, and don't worry in case they aren't answered immediately, we will definitely answer them at the end of the webinar. So I, I, I encourage you to engage with us on the live chat. So as and when we are discussing something, uh, you can definitely um, share your inputs about um, the particular uh, issue at hand or maybe how you are handling it in your environment so we can even share these things um, to the rest of the attendees over the course of the webinar. Right, so let's get started. And here is the agenda for today's webinar. Um, so in particular, like the title suggests, we are gonna be concerned about ensuring personal data integrity and confidentiality, right? Some really important stuff, personal data integrity and confidentiality. and in particular, we are going to be very, very concerned about alerts and changes, right? Because changes happening in your environment can potentially create um, a security loophole, and this could result in non-compliance. So this is a very important idea in achieving data security. So we're going to be stressing upon this and uh, looking for solutions for achieving this over the course of the webinar. Um, so, um, and of course, we're, we're gonna be in particular, we're gonna be focusing on your Windows environment um, and ensuring the personal data integrity uh, in your Windows environment. Right, so this is the agenda for today's webinar, what you see on the screen. And I just wanna give a small, insight for a minute before we get started uh, because in the GDPR there are a few questions that some of you might be having because some of you might already be in the process of of um, getting things in place for the GDPR for maybe some of you are new to the idea of GDPR so I just want to just share um, a resource the one that you see on the screen I'm just going to link it on the live chat so I'm just going to send this over So this is a free GDPR resource um, uh, zone that we've created at uh, Manage Engine. And what it uh, does is it gives you a clear idea of how you can get started with the GDPR. There are some uh, free documents available here that you can download. Uh, we've got a solutions book. We've got a, uh, a general handbook about the GDPR and a presentation. So you can view all of this. I've just sent it across on the live chat. So be sure to check this out um, in case you're still getting up to speed on what the GDPR is all about, right? So, okay, I've got, I've got uh, that out of the way. Uh, so broadly speaking though, there are two fundamental ideas about the GDPR that you must be concerned about. The first is data collection, and the second is the processing of personal data which is where you have to ensure the protection in every stage of the processing. And that is what we are going to be concerned about in today's webinar, the data processing. And particularly, we are going to be interested in ensuring 
the confidentiality and the integrity of, pers of the personal data that you've collected. So I want to get started by giving some insights on how you should try and approach the GDPR itself. Right, because you don't need to, so you certainly don't need to start from scratch to be GDPR compliant. But what you do need to do is tweak your existing processes and have the appropriate technology in place for ensuring that uh, your personal data is protected at every stage. And this means you need to revamp and enhance your existing security strategy. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. But of course, this my example is more about data collection. But I want you to think about, I'm sure you probably are in, uh, at this very moment, you might be in the process of revamping uh, the different consent forms and your privacy policy uh, across your company, right, for the collection of data. So in this case, what you must be doing is trying to figure out the different points during which you're collecting data uh, and then you have to properly review this and then see to it that you're explicitly obtaining consent from the individual. So this thing that you're doing for the collection of data, the same concept extends to the processing of data as well, right? As in how you approach the problem, which is you need to first assess your existing process and then look to fill the security gaps and look at tightening the security of data from all angles. So even if you are compliant with an existing regulation, maybe you are ISO 27001 compliant, there are still a few extra things that you need to consider for the GDPR. And in particular, let's look at a couple of um, interesting articles um, that the GDPR talks about. And the first is article number 24, which talks about the responsibility of the controller. So you can see the exact text from the GDPR um, that we have uh, pasted on, uh, on this slide. And you can see what it says in bold. It says the controller shall implement appropriate technical and organizational measures, right? So you have to ensure accountability in the collection, processing, and storage of personal data, right? So this article is specifically trying to bring in accountability into the picture and the data controller will be responsible and accountable for GDPR compliance. So you must ensure that everything is proper and everything is secure in the processing of data. So you must take appropriate steps and implement measures to ensure the security of personal data at every stage. These are the measures. These are the technical and organizational measures that you must implement, right? And all of these, you can see the last sentence that talks about the measures shall be reviewed and updated where necessary. So all of these data processing activities that you're going to carry out, you, you must ensure that you're constantly reviewing these processes. Right. So this is an important consideration that you got to keep in mind. The responsibility of the controller. After Article 24, I have another interesting uh, thing that you need to look at and which is Article 32, which talks about the security of processing itself. Right. So I have a few excerpts from Article 32 and these two are very, very, very important. And we will be using uh, these terminologies um, over the course of the webinar, and I'm sure you will be, you probably are already using this in your organization. And if not, I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot of these words, especially the ones in bold over um, the course of your GDPR uh, implementation, right? So this excerpt that talks about ensuring the ongoing confidentiality, integrity, availability, and resilience of processing systems and services, right? This is the key. This is really the fundamental um, principle of data security, right? And then the next uh, excerpt that, that especially the, the thing that you see in bold, right? You want to avoid accidental or unlawful destruction, loss, alteration, unauthorized disclosure, and access to personal data, 
right so this is very important and the data controller is responsible for this so you have to ensure that you have taken proper steps after you've collected personal data to ensure its confidentiality its integrity the availability and resilience so uh, in simple terms what the reason why you're expected to do this is because say you have collected my information say i have filled up a form on one of your websites or you've got hold of my information through whatever other means and i have provided say my name my address my telephone number my email id and so on all of which are are personally uh, uh, identifiable information and and then you should ensure that once you've collected this only authorized people are accessing it and you also need to ensure that my data is not tampered with right you i wouldn't want my first name changed or my address changed or anything of that sort so you have to um you have to in particular uh, avoid the unlawful destruction the loss and alteration and the unauthorized disclosure uh, or access to personal data so these are things that you have to be responsible for that you will be accountable for which means you have to implement measures to ensure the security of processing of data at every stage so this brings me to a very important um, idea and concept uh, and concept of security auditing right you need answers for the four vital w's basically you need to track all the important changes that are being made to the objects and this includes your files and folders your your users your groups your computers your group policy your acs everything in your windows environment and you need to be on top of the four vital w's right which are who made the who made a particular change which object was changed when was the change made and what the new value is versus what the old value was uh, which is why you compare the change in value so you need to know these things you need to know the changed value you need to know the who the which the when and the what right this is a basic but but very important measure and you must have this under control uh, so that you know exactly what is going on in your environment and you can ensure that everything is proper and that the integrity of data is maintained this is a good starting point to uh, to auditing a very fundamental idea right but coming back to the gdpr these this is a the, a good first step to getting started with securing your personal data you obviously have to take stock of the confidential data that you have so the gdpr explicitly expects you to follow um risk assessments right risk assessments are a must when processing personal data especially of high risk uh, is comes into the picture so data controllers must carry out data what is called dpia the data protection impact assessments in order to assess the risk associated with personal data and this is something you must do even before the processing of personal data starts right so even before you get into data processing you need to ensure that you have done uh, adequate risk assessments and you in particular what the gdpr calls the dpia you need to conduct dpias which are data protection impact assessments right so a good starting point again is to try and identify and isolate the personal data in your environment and i know this can be a little tricky because you need to first identify what personal data you have and try and segregate it from the other confidential data that you have uh, in your environment right so you need to understand what data you have as in what data you have collected and then figure out exactly where this data is stored in your network and and you need to know which which files and which folders contain personal data so try and isolate this try and isolate 
the GDPR related personal data from the rest of the data that you have in your network. Because once you've done that, and once you know where it is, it is just a matter of setting up the right permissions so that only authorized individuals can access can access the data. Uh, and then and then what you need to do is of course set up auditing to continuously track and review activity. This is the only way that you can ensure everything is up and running the way it is supposed to be without any uh, without say any unauthorized uh, access or unauthorized op operation performed on the sensitive data. So here is what you need to do for GDPR. This is actionable information. You need to set up auditing in your environment so that you are able to continuously track activity that concerns your personal data. Again, this is to ensure that only the right people, uh, only the right people who are supposed to access the data are accessing it and also to ensure the integrity of the data, right? That it is not tampered with by any unauthorized person. So every access and every modification made to the piece of data has to be authorized. And the best way to achieve this is through continuously auditing accesses and modifications. Pretty straightforward. The integrity of the data is uh, in your files and folders must be maintained. And you are going to do this by continuously auditing accesses and modifications made to your files and folders. So this is where the idea of file integrity monitoring uh, comes in and becomes so, so important with regards to the GDPR. File integrity monitoring is basically the essence of data protection that the GDPR requires you to do. So you have to ensure that all the accesses and all the modifications are authorized and you have to ensure that the integrity of your files is maintained and you're going to do that with FIM, with file integrity monitoring. So, so here are what here's what you need to track, right? Here are the things that you need to track in your environment. Obviously, you need to. Uh, we said you need to ensure accesses and changes. We said that at the start of the webinar. So you have your access control lists, which specify who can access and what what operations they can perform on a particular file or folder. So you need to track ACLs and any changes made to the ACLs. You need to track group memberships because the ACLs themselves are going to be assigned, uh, a file or folder access is going to be assigned to a particular group. So you need to check if users, uh, if the group membership of users change. So that is another change that you need to track. And then of course, you have the accesses itself being made to personal data and the modifications itself being made to the personal data. So events like file accesses and reading files, writing files, say renaming files, all of these things, these are events that happen in your environment, right? I don't think there's anyone who's attending uh, today's webinar who says, nope, this doesn't happen in my environment. These are common things. These happen in everyone's environment. People are going to be accessing your confidential data, um, reading the data, maybe uh, writing it, renaming files, these kinds of operations happen to everyone. And these must be tracked. So this is why you need to set up auditing in your environment so that you are able to track such events and periodically review all this activity to ensure proper usage. And you can do this by running reports. You can run reports, you can schedule reports, you can have them sent over, you can do it in the, the way you feel best possible, but you have to do it. You have to periodically review all this activity to ensure everything is proper. But of course, but of course, your it doesn't stop with just uh, reports. Uh, you need to run, you need alerts as well in addition to just running reports. So you need alerts 
uh, for unauthorized things, right? So you need alerts for when someone who doesn't have permission to access a file tries to access it. You need you need alerts for when a modification um, of a file happens, which is supposed to be just a read-only file, right? So you need an alert for changes to permissions, that is changes to the access control lists. And of course, you need alerts for group membership changes as well. So summing up everything uh, that we just discussed, you have to audit changes to the ACLs, changes to the groups, accesses, and of course, modifications made to the data. And all this auditing, tracking all of these things like the ACLs and the changes to the groups and the accesses and modifications to data, all of this has to be continuous and in real time. So that is a big challenge, right? So we've said all of this is important, and I'm sure if uh, all of you are also probably nodding your head, agreeing that, yeah, all of this is important, but how do we achieve this? That's what I'm going to show you now. Let's look at how we can achieve tracking all of these accesses and changes happening in our Windows environment. So the first prerequisite and the first step is to actually set up auditing, is to actually set up file auditing in your environment, right? So what you need to first do is go to your group policy management. So you can even do this as I'm, as I'm, as I'm talking about it. You go to your group policy uh, management and you need to enable auditing. And more specifically, you need to enable object access auditing. Right, because all of the auditing uh, is turned uh, turned off by default. So you need to go and first go to your group policy management and go go to your audit policy and enable object access auditing. Right. So that is one one measure, or uh, one the first step. The next step is you need to actually go to the file, go to the particular file that has a uh, confidential uh, uh, personal data. You need to go to the file and you need to um, specify what you want to audit, right? Which users and groups should be audited when accessing uh, that particular object and which events need to be audited. So this is what is the SACL, that is your secure access control list. So you need to go and specify on that particular file what, what events um, should for, for what events should a log entry be generated for, right? Two simple steps. You go and configure object access auditing, and then you go and specify the SACL on the files and folders that have, co have confidential personal data. So now what you're doing is, uh, is by doing this, you are telling your system for what events it needs to generate log entries for. So your system starts monitoring these events and generating log entries as and when uh, the particular event occurs. And where is this going to go? Where are these logs going to go? To your event viewer, of course. So all these, uh, these security logs will get written to event viewer. And this is where you need to be a little, where it gets a little tricky, right? Because to achieve uh, file integrity monitoring in real time, you might not be able to do this with just Event Viewer. As in you, you actually won't be able to do this using just Event Viewer because Event Viewer, as you all know, has so many drawbacks and shortcomings, right? Reporting, it, nope, it's not built in. It's, you don't have it in Event Viewer. You need alerts. You need granular alerting. Is that possible in Event Viewer? No. You need alerts, you might need alerts email, email to you, or you need alerts, and you need all of these alerts in real time. And that is just not possible. You cannot filter out a huge, from a huge sea of events in Event Viewer and find out exactly uh, what you are looking for in a particular uh, context, right? Because you don't have that sort of real time granular alerting and auditing uh, functionality with the native Windows technology. So that makes it unreliable for real-time auditing and alerting, right? So you need to now use a reliable real-time auditing tool for ensuring security and compliance, 
right? So you use the Windows Media uh, technology only to configure auditing. Con that is configure the object access auditing and specifying the SACLs. But then you don't continue using just your uh, event viewer for carrying out your uh, actual auditing process. You need to use a real-time auditing tool which will make your life whole lot easier and efficient as well because you can get reports and alerts easily for changes to your access control list, your uh, accesses and modifications to personal data. You can get reports, predefined reports and alerts if you use a reliable real-time auditing tool, right? And, and you can also get the same reports and alerts for group membership, your security group membership changes. You can get reports and alerts if you're using the ideal um, real-time file server and Active Directory auditing tools, right? So we have that, of course, at Manage Engine. We have that. We have two particular, uh, in particular, we have two tools that can help you with this. We have AD Audit Plus and File Audit Plus, right? And as the names probably um, indicate, AD Audit Plus is going to take care of auditing in real time important changes happening in your Active Directory environment. And File Audit Plus is a dedicated file server auditing tool. Right, so let me just jump into the product to sort of um, show you what we have discussed and how we can achieve this using AD Audit Plus and File Audit Plus. Right, so we spoke about file um, integrity monitoring and tracking important events happening on the files and folders. So I'm just jumping to my File Audit Plus um, machine and you can see I have a summary of all the important events that are happening on a particular uh, file server. So you have your modifications, your creations, permissions changed, deletions, renamed, the SACL changes, the file extension changes, uh, files being moved, ownership changes, um, overrides, all important events uh, and operations uh, that have been performed on the file. So this is just an overview report. You get a whole bunch of reports apart from this with File Audit Plus. So if you can look at um, the left pane, you just have to select a particular server name. Then you just got to choose the report um, that you're looking for. So whether you're looking for, uh, I just have a summary of the events, but maybe you're looking for just security permissions changes or failed attempts or creation events. You can get that. You can get that with the tool with just a simple click. You can choose in particular what are the um, actions um, that you want to track. Let me just uh, log in again because the session got expired. So if I go to reports, you can then choose report filters and choose exactly what kind of events you want to track. And then you can choose the objects that you want to track. You can choose the users that you want to track and the business hours. Uh, for which you want to do the tracking. So all the event information that your Windows environment has generated has been collected by File Audit Plus and gives you a neat GUI so that you can easily pull out information that you are looking for, right? So if you just choose a particular time frame, so if I choose um, last 30 days, I can immediately get the information in just one click. How cool is that, right? Because you don't need to struggle with event viewer auditing. You can get File Audit Plus, um, File Audit Plus's agent to collect all this event uh, information from your file servers and easily give you um, all the information that you're looking for in a matter of clicks. So these are just the reports. We want alerts as well, right? And I'm sorry if I'm just um, rushing through all of this. Um, in fact, if um, of course we are we're just doing a single webinar session at it, and I don't want to make it uh, too much about the product. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to share yet another resource, and this is the File Audit Plus demo request form. So you can schedule a personalized demo, a web-based personalized demo uh, from one of our product experts at your convenience to really um, learn about File Audit Plus and what it can do for the GDPR um, in your environment. So I'm just going to send a link again for File Audit Plus. Um, 
just typing the message out right so uh, i've sent another link so you can schedule a personalized web based demo for file audit plus by clicking on this link it would it our product experts will give you a quick uh, 15 to 20 minute walkthrough of the product over call so that you get a better idea of what you can achieve um, using file audit plus right so but anyway jumping back to the product um, i'm going to just show you that you can also create alerts for the events that you see in the reports because some of the things uh, you might be happy with by just re reviewing the information using reports but you can also create alert profiles to stay alerted for important events right so you can choose the actions for which you want to get alerts for right i'm not going to take you through the entire configuration process but i'm sure you can see from the screen that it's quite um, straightforward uh, in setting up the alerts so in particular you can choose the actions that you want to get alerts for right creations modifications deletions uh, permissions changed your sacs being changed deny uh, events which are in particular uh, important for detecting attacks right if people are continuously um, having their um, uh, access requests or the right requests denied by the file uh, you can get alerts for that as well and you can set up a threshold for that so you can get maybe 10 repeated uh, read being denied for a particular user you can get an alert for that and things like that using the, the threshold limit option in the alert profile. So this is how you can get reports and alerts for your file servers in a very quick and efficient way using file audit plus you have predefined reports that let you periodically review all the information and you can set up alerts for important events and have these alerts emailed to you or uh, and, and the emails are in real time. So you can have dashboard alerts as well, or you can have these alerts emailed to you um, when those particular um, critical events occur. So that is one thing we, that we discussed. The other thing, don't forget, is group membership changes in Active Directory, right? So just like ACLs, think about changes happening to groups because changes happening to ACLs are important, and I'm sure you agree with me, but you also need to worry about changes happening to the groups because what if someone either unknowingly or maliciously is put into the enterprise admin group that is a big problem uh, that is a huge problem because they will then get access to all the critical resources in your network and you cannot allow that to happen so here is where an active directory auditing tool AD Audit Plus, which is a real-time uh, solution, it can collect all the different events that are happening in your Active Directory environment. It can alert you for critical Active Directory changes, such as security group membership changes, and it can give you these alerts so that you can go and preempt any uh, potential attack that could lead to non-compliance. Right. So you have two very powerful tools. This is the dashboard of AD Audit Plus that gives important information about different um, critical components of your Active Directory. Right. So you can track things like your logon failures, your GPO modifications, your group membership changes. Every single um, event of interest occurring in your Active Directory can be tracked with over 200 plus predefined reports. Right? So you can see a whole bunch of reports for OU management, GPO management, um, and everything really of interest to any administrator can be found using AD Audit Plus. So you get a GUI where you can go and dive in and pull out information about particular, um, import, uh, about particular events happening in your Active Directory. And just as File Audit Plus, you can set up alerts on AD Audit Plus to get real-time notifications for critical changes happening in Active Directory, right? I'm not going to go through and, and walk you through uh, the products beyond this because we also want to try and answer the questions that you've been asking on the live chat. So I'm going to conclude the presentation part of the webinar at this point. So 
thank you so much for joining us. I hope the session uh, added good value to your work. And in case you have any questions, you can continue to ask them on the live chat and our team is here answering uh, your questions. And in case you have any product specific uh, questions as well, you can shoot them out on the live chat and we will um, immediately answer those as well. I'm also going to send you the AD Audit Plus personalized um, demo request form. So you can request a demo for AD Audit Plus as well if you if you wish so you can get get our product experts on call to give you a personalized web based demo of um, AD Audit Plus as well. So I'm just going to send that link across. So this would be the link for AD Audit Plus. So I'm going to send that across on the live chat. So apart from that, if you have any other questions, please keep them coming. We're answering them on the live chat. Um, and do take a moment at the end of the webinar to fill up the feedback form and let us know what you like or didn't like during uh, during the session. And once again, on behalf of the entire AD Solutions team involved in hosting today's webinar, um, thank you so much for joining us and have a great day ahead.